the attempt here. But I am going to give you guys two more problems to go ahead and try. So I didn't really say. I didn't really say in the first step to simplify, but in this example, you do have to simplify um, the 4 times x minus 2. So that's not in one of my steps, but hopefully that should be just kind of like a given when solving any type of equations. OK, so now, again, we need to isolate the absolute value, right? So we can see that my absolute value is being multiplied by 2 thirds, a lovely fraction, everybody's favorite. So to undo multiplication, we can divide, right? Um, but dividing fractions is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So anytime you multiply by the reciprocal of a number, a number multiplied by its reciprocal always gives you 1. And 1 times anything is going to be that anything, right? 1 times the absolute value is going to leave you with that absolute value. So that goes out. Then we have 3 halves. Now remember, this is a quantity, so you've got to use parentheses. You're not just multiplying the 3 halves times one of the numbers. You've got to make sure you multiply the quantity times 3 halves. So we're left with 3x minus 6 equals, um, we didn't cover whole numbers and fractions, did we? 6x minus 12. Now, where did you get those answers? Some students might say, I have no idea how to multiply a whole number times a fraction. Really? You just multiply really? Just put well, a 1 over under it. Hold on. Very good. All right. Well, you know what? My last class period was freaking out. Um, and maybe it was, yes. So very good, you guys. I'm happy to hear. Um, but yes, guys, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that do not remember um, or were never taught, when multiplying a whole number times a fraction, just rewrite your whole number as a fraction by putting it over 1. And then multiplying fractions is not cross multiplication. Erase that from your memory. I'm never going to use it. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply across. Cross multiplication is something that is totally different. So you have a negative 24 divided by 2, which is a negative 12. If you do the same thing for this one, you'd have 4 times 3, which is 12, divided by 2, which gives you 6. So you have a 6x minus 12. OK, so now we're done with step one. Now we have to do step two, create our two cases. So we have 3x minus 6 equals 6x minus 12. The first case, guys, is really the easiest. Everybody should have the first case. You just rewrite the problem without the absolute value. But then remember, remember what we did in our previous problems. We did it where it was positive, and we did where it was negative. The tough thing about this problem is now that's I have to make that whole quantity tt negative. Yes? Yes, correct. 3x minus 6 equals negative 6x. Oops, no, I want that to be regular. So yeah, you, but you got to make sure you change the signs of both of them. What okay. students forget is they just change the sign of like one of them. So that's why I'll put them in green to make sure, hey, make sure you negate both of them. OK? <clears throat> so now. Um, now we got to solve, but we got to get the variables to the same side. So I'll subtract a 3x, subtract 3x. I'm left with negative 6 equals 3x minus 12. Over here, I'm going to add a 6x to both sides. So I get 9x minus 6 equals 12. And do you guys see why it was different, how I solved on different? Here I decided to subtract a 3x. And here I decided to add 6x. Do you guys see why I decided to do those? Because each of my times, I made the variable positive. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about make the variable positive. It's not necessary. You could do it the other way, but it's just my preferred method. So let's add 12. Add 12. 6 equals 3x. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. 2 equals x. Over here, add 6. Add 6. 9x. I'm getting 2 twice. <sighs> This, dang it, divide by 9, x equals 2. So x equals 2. But we got to go and check our answer. So we go back in, and we plug 2. Now remember, typically when you're checking your answer, you'd plug in 2 in for x and for x, right? And even, But I told you to use the one where the absolute value is isolated, which is right here. Now, you could plug in 2 in for 2. But if you know you did your math right, then I will, I'll try to save you some time. 
what I would recommend you do is plug in 2 only for what the absolute value is equal to. And if that is positive, then your solution works. If that turns out to be negative, then your solution um, is, is extraneous. So let's plug in 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0, which is perfectly fine. It's not, it's not negative, so this works. All right. Um, now, let me just kind of go through an example, though, of where it'd be 